As a grade, we managed to accomplish things that no other grade has ever done before. We raised almost $8,000 for Rethink Breast Cancer, produced an amazing talent show, dance fashion show, and film festival, and everything was done entirely online. We are the first graduating class to learn online, the first graduating class to learn in quadmesters, and the first graduating class to go the whole year without needing lockers. We truly made history. That's grade 12 student David Siegel Pillimer of Toronto delivering his valedictorian speech at last week's graduation ceremony for the Tannenbaum Chat Jewish High School. It had all been pre-taped following strict COVID lockdown rules in Ontario, although there was an outdoor portion on Wednesday where the students could come with their parents in small groups and pick up their diplomas. The 196 students haven't actually set foot in their school building for pretty much most of the year because of COVID. They've been studying at home, in their rooms, via Zoom. Contrast that with the grade 12 graduation at Vancouver's King David High School last Thursday. The 58 students have been attending classes in person all year with their masks on. So at their grad, the students filed into the school gym, they received their diplomas, they wore the blue and gold gowns, and the speeches were done live. But the parents had to watch from home via live stream. COVID has made the final year of high school for the Jewish Day School's Class of 2021 unprecedented, no matter what part of the country you live in. To my fellow graduates, remember, if you can do a whole year of school online from your room, you can do anything you put your mind to. Congratulations, Tannenbaum Chat Class of 2021. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, June 24th, 2021. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. So aside from being an author and a journalist and your podcaster, I'm also a teacher. In fact, I taught this whole year and the end of last year completely online via computer from my dining room table using Zoom, and it was really hard and hard for the students. So I wanted to know how the class of 2021 at Jewish high schools in Canada survived their final grade 12 year under COVID, the first cohort of kids to do it ever. And I got a crazy idea. Why not get students from Toronto and students from Vancouver together in one Zoom interview so they can compare notes? And so that's what we did. Coming up, you'll meet the grads and hear their first-hand experiences. But first, here's what's making news in Canada right now. Thursday, June 24th is the world's first International Holocaust Survivor Day. Organizers felt that since January 27th is the day to remember those who were murdered in the Holocaust, there should also be a day for those who lived. Over 60 organizations are part of the new event, including some from Canada, like the March of the Living and Congregation Habonim of Toronto. It's all happening online. Many Canadian survivors are being featured in a new documentary which debuts Thursday on the March of the Living YouTube channel and on Israel's I-24 News. Max Eisen, Judy Cohen, Nate Leipziger and the late Bill Gleed are featured, among others. All of the footage comes from the March of the Living trips, where the survivors accompanied busloads of young Jewish students to Poland and then on to Israel each spring. We've put a link to the website in the show notes so you can catch the event live or watch it later. Turning to politics now, Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Garneau is going to Israel, the West Bank and Jordan. A news release from his office says the trip will, quote, advance Canada's support towards the goal of a comprehensive, just and lasting peace in the region and a two-state solution. The news release doesn't say what the exact itinerary will be while Garneau is there. He's been to Israel several times before, but this is the first time since the end of the hostilities between Israel and Hamas in May. So try to picture it. Three students in Toronto, each in their own homes, on Zoom, the two co-presidents, Alexa Jacoby and Isaac Began, and the valedictorian David Siegel Pillimer, who you heard earlier. And in Vancouver, we had six grade 12s in school, in a classroom, sitting side by side at one long table and wearing masks. Karen Katz, Max Laskin, Maya Cantor, Amadeo Otolenghi, Isaac Liedemann, and Maya McNamara. I can tell you that when the Toronto students learned that the Vancouver students had been in school in person almost the whole year, their jaws dropped. They were so jealous. 
Only one of the students actually had COVID, although there were a couple of cases in each school, and both grades held end-of-year events. Vancouver had a closing Havdala outside, while Toronto had its Golden Bagels. They're sort of like Academy Awards, but it was online. But you guys had to study online all the time. How was that mentally and physically to deal with being cooped up in your room eight hours a day? The grade 12s are very self-motivated. As you know, your first six months of high of grade 12, you need them for university. And you know whether we were in person or online, you knew you were going to be working regardless of the location. So I found, at least, and a lot of my friends also found, that the first bit of the year, everyone was like had their head in their books, was working. And it was lucky because at the beginning, we were still in person. But of course, otherwise, we do lots of, like we do a lot of fun activities or spirit days, we call them, at Tandemom Chat. And something that we were allowed to do because of this Zoom, this new platform, we moved a lot of our events and special programs to at night rather than during the day when they would usually be in school. So we were able to kind of create this new sense of community with people who may not be able to come or other people in the community. And we kind of opened up these events, like we created Dancing with the Staff, where we had like different uh, teacher and student combinations. We had Think Pink, where everyone comes to support breast cancer awareness. So we had a lot of these great events that we moved online at night, which really helped the student body throughout the year. You guys in um, Vancouver didn't have that problem because you were in class, right? But what other impact of being there during the COVID pandemic? I would say a a huge uh, part of just like what we missed out on, I guess, even though we were able to be in school, which was like definitely very helpful. But it's just hard, I guess, being in years past and looking up to grade 12s and seeing all like the fun and amazing things they do and then not being able to do some of them. For example, like any type of like, I mean, like get together or whatever, like you can't do any of that, especially inside. And now we're lucky enough to be able to do some of those outside. But for the first, I would say half half of the year, it was pretty, pretty go to school and then go home. And school obviously sucks for the Toronto people. They couldn't even have that luxury. So we're pretty grateful. But it was still uh, unfortunate that we couldn't really do much else other than school. That's true. Another thing that was kind of taken away from school was um, like our, the sports aspect of it. I mean, we were lucky enough to have like practices, so volleyball practices, basketball, soccer. We did have most of them, but what was canceled was the games and tournaments that are usually like a staple every year and something that um, I play volleyball and I, I really like looked forward to that. And that was something that I was really excited for for my grade 12 year. So it was more like kind of for fun this year, which was amazing. It was so fun, but we didn't kind of have that like competitive aspect to it this year I would say it was also kind of scary almost like knowing that everywhere else is completely locked down and we're coming and like mingling with peers and like we were wearing a mask all inside but most lunches we were eating outside without our masks on obviously Um, so it was just kind of a little bit of a realization for everyone that like we still do have COVID here, especially when there were scares in like grade nine or something. They would send out a school-wide email and it would just kind of be like at a reality shock, like there is still COVID even if we are at school every day. Well, I think, I know you said like we didn't really, you know, go on Zoom too much and it's true that we didn't, but we still did spend a few months on Zoom in the spring. And I mean, I think we can all relate to what you're saying about kind of feeling done with Zoom after being on it for many hours a day. And even though we took breaks between classes, it's still it was a long time to stare at a screen and and it doesn't really effectively replace social interaction. So it was definitely a bit of a struggle in the spring. And I think we're all grateful to be at school now. Thank you for explaining that. And what about the Toronto folks? How mentally and physically hard has it been for you guys? You you were locked in. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's been really hard um, for a lot of different reasons. I mean, it's like socially, it's difficult. Like, it's hard to stay friends with all these people when you're not in their cohort or when you're fully online, you can't even see them. And there's also a lot of, like, activities that people like to do. Like, I love, like, music and, like, theater and all these things, and I couldn't do any of that this year. And it was, like, so, so hard for me not being able to do all those things that I love to do. Um, and Zoom fatigue is, like, so so real and like the past few months like I have horrible eyesight like I'm already wearing contacts I can barely see and like my vision keeps getting worse I have an eye doctor appointment like I'm not gonna be surprised if he tells me my prescriptions like a whole other so much worse than it already was before like it's so hard on like your physical and mental health but I think it's just nice knowing 
that sort of everyone's kind of been going through it in the same way I have. Like I have a lot of friends, even like, you know, Isaac and David, like I've known them for a while and like, we're all sort of in the same position. We're all in student council. We're all trying to do all these things. And it's, it's really hard. (laughs) Okay, so to wrap it up, if you had to describe how you're feeling as you leave grade 12 and getting ready for your prom, sorry, your grad, what emoji would each of you use to describe? (laughs) I've had like the time of my life over the past four years at Tannenbaum Chat. I've had made so many friends, like so many great memories. So I'm going to be sad, like, you know, a little tear um, to leave that behind. But I'm also really excited for next year in university and sort of for the future. So that's why I'm sort of feeling like it's very bittersweet. It's very emotional. So it's smiley face with a tear. I put the like um, the money sign um, emoji, like with its tongue out, like like, ah, like <laughs> the money sign and the dollar eyes. I did this one because I think it's time to blow off some steam and just kind of get ready for the next chapter in our lives. Um, and this emoji represents that because it's kind of taking a step out of the educational point of view and yeah, a new perspective. You guys are amazing. And I thank you so much for agreeing to come on and share this with us. Thank you so much. And so what's next? Well, all the students except for two are heading to university. One is going to Israel to study at IDC in Herzliya, and two are going to do a gap year in Israel. And by the way, after our interview, There was a lot of messaging happening between two of the young women, one from Vancouver and one from Toronto, who've discovered they're both going to Queens. So I was really happy to make that connection. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia, integrity, community, quality and customer care. Today's shout out goes to one listener in Montreal, Lois Leaf, who is probably the person who listens the earliest in the day. Our episodes drop at 4 a.m. Eastern time and she listens around 6. We'll close the episode with a bit more from the online graduation ceremony at Tannenbaum Chat for the class of 2021 as they sing their school song in Hebrew. (laughs) 